Hello to you, Are Enough Group. How are you going? Steve Barker um, here from a bit of a stormy rogger today. Uh, we've got a bit of uh, thunder rolling around, so uh, hopefully the heavens don't open until I finish this little chat. So I wanted to come on because uh, I've just spent an amazing weekend with 75 young people um, doing the Ripen program, which is the Rotary Youth program for enrichment um, of young people. So basically, you know, the, the 75 people came along um, for a, a camp at the weekend and um, together with other uh, rotary instructors and that, we were able to, to help these young people develop and grow their own um, toolbox of life skills. Absolutely amazing um, event, really, really exciting, great to watch and great to be part of. It was a real pleasure to be able to um, engage with these young people and to share some of the experiences and learnings that I've had um, to enable to them to be able to go forward and, and try them on for themselves. The thing that I really want to discuss is the atmosphere that they created themselves. They created this really safe and caring and loving environment where there was no judgment. It was a judgment-free zone. People were allowed to be who they needed to be. People were allowed to be themselves. They were allowed to wholeheartedly engage with the knowledge that there was no right and there was no wrong. There was no judgment there. And these young people really, really sort of created this environment themselves. And then on top of that, they supported and engaged with each other and, and just really connected. It was a beautiful thing. They've come from all over the Riverina. Some of them traveled up to four hours to be able to attend it this weekend. And it was beautiful. Now, the thing that um, really struck me right at the end, and this is what I want to talk to you about today, uh, was that when it was time for them to go home, when the camp was over, there was lots of tears. There was lots and lots of tears. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for joining me. There was lots of tears from some of the, some of the young people who were there. And <clears throat> Hi Astrid, how are you? Yeah, it's good afternoon to you too. So yeah, there was these tears from these young people and um, some of them were actually sobbing. You know, you, know when, you know when you cry so hard that you can't get your breath? Well, you know, a couple of these, these young people were doing that and I was amazed at the, uh, at the impact and I went over to check that they were all right and to see how they were going. And um, as we got involved in the conversation, it became clear that they didn't want to go home. They were having such a great time. They'd be able to create this environment and they wanted to stay within that environment because it was safe. It was judgment free. They were supported and loved and encouraged. Um, and they, uh, they, they, they really got into the whole thing. And then when they realized that they had to go back, they had to go back to their normal environments, their families and their, their school worlds, um, reality hit home that that, that that bubble was just about to burst. And you know, I could relate to this. You know, we, we've all had those moments where we've had a, a fantastic experience, whether it be a holiday, whether it be a learning experience, whether it be just hanging out with your friends over a weekend, and then you realize you've got to go back to the drudgery of day-to-day -day life. You've got to go back to school, you've got to go back to work, um, and you've got to deal with those people that you know don't really um, float your boat, don't really get you, they judge you, you know, they, they may um, intimidate you, there could be a chance of bullying going on there. And <clears throat> You know, what I said to these young people, and I took this from um, a guy called David Goggins. I've talked about David Goggins before, um, an elite marathon runner, an ultra marathon runner. And uh, the thing that I take away from him, the thing that I like to model is his use of the cookie jar. And this is what I said to these young people. And I wanted to share this with you because um, I think it's relevant. I think it's something that we can all take away. You know, not, not, not just young people, but adults as well. You know, when we've had those good experiences and then we know that we're going to go back to the drudgery and the, the, the run and wheel life and, and, and we know that we're going to be under the pump. We know that we're going to be under pressure, whether that either be through people or whether it's time or work or, or you know, an environment. So what I said to these young people was, you've had a great experience here this weekend and it's been beautiful. Um, now what you need to do is you need to be able to take away those memories and you need to be able to store them. Now the way that David Goggins does it is he, t he takes all his good memories, all the positive memories, and he stores them as little cookies. So I said over this weekend you've probably had about 10, maybe 15 different really great experiences and what I need you to do is to be able to um, think of those experiences and then save them like a little cookie, pop them in your cookie jar. 
And you know, as you go through each fort and each memory, you need, and I, I said to him, you can do this on the way home, in the bus. Like I said, some of them had four hours of worth of traveling, so they had plenty of time to think about it. But um, they could take these, these, these good memories and they can make them into a cookie and they can throw them in the cookie jar. And then when the going gets tough, when you're, when you're back in that real world, you know, when they're back in school or in an environment that's, that's giving them um, not the safe environment that they had when they were in the, in, at the riping camp, but um, you know, there could be bullying, intimidation, there could be pressures of family life, there could be uh, exam pressures, there could be all sorts of constraints. I said, what you need to do is when, you, when you're starting to feel yourself go down, is you reach into your cookie jar, you reach into your mental cookie jar, you take one of those cookies out and you remember the good time that you had, you remember that feeling, and then you try to reattach re yourself to that feeling. And then what that does is it just boosts you up. It's just like having a little snack, giving you that little bit of energy just to push you through that moment of, um, of doubt or fear or um, concern. So if you can just take that cookie out, yep, eat your cookie, and then it just re reinvigorates you, rebolsters you, and keeps you pushing forward. And I said to him, it is really important that you keep moving forward. And, um, you know, they, they said, wow, that's a great analogy. And as I, as I drove home yesterday afternoon, I thought, when I get a minute, I'm going to jump on Facebook and I'm going to tell the URNF group about this because, you know, these young people, they were, they were so inspired. They were, you know, they've gone away with some, some great connections and some great understandings that they realize that they can be themselves. They don't have to worry about the, um, the impressions of other people. They don't have to worry about the fears of being judged, you know, because they now know that everybody else has got those fears. And if they put themselves out there, if they, if they extend something, if they put an idea out there, then generally it's going to be received by somebody because that other person is actually thinking themselves, shit, everybody's thinking about me. And, every, you know, and they start to worry about themselves. And as soon as they see, you know, a gesture, they'll, they'll, they'll latch onto it and go, yeah, that's a great gesture. Thank you very much. You know, and then it rolls on from there. So they've been able to take away, this is their greatest takeaway from the weekend. But like I said, the, the, the emotion at the end of the camp really blew me away and uh, it just went to demonstrate how strongly these guys had, uh, had contacted and committed themselves to this group that they felt that it was such a safe environment that they didn't want it to leave. Um, it was a beautiful experience, really great weekend, but that you know, I wanted to share with you. I wanted to share with you the David Goggins cookie jar um, mental uh, cookie that you can, you can take when you're feeling down. So that's, you know, if, if you do experience those feelings, you experience them quite a lot. You need to go away and you need to fill your cookie jar. You need to think back as to when you've had great experiences, great um, connections, great understanding, um, great fun, great enjoyment. And you need to be able to make those into little cookies and then just throw them into your cookie jar. And then when you're feeling a little bit down, when, you, when, it, when it's going tough, you just reach inside, take hold of the cookie and munch on it. It will reinvigorate you. It works. It really does work. I use it myself over and over and over again. And I know that the young people are going to go away and implement this as well. And I wanted to share this with you. So that's the takeaway for today. Hey, Tim, how are you going? Nice to be, nice for you to jump on. I hope you're well. I'm just wrapping up this um, Facebook Live, but you can watch it on playback. It's all about the cookie jar. We've talked about the cookie jar before. Okay, all right, I will speak to you soon. Take care, have a great week. Bye-bye now.